Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the fifth episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers titled Different Drum. We start this episode at, you guessed it, the juice bar, where Kim is teaching a class of students some dance exercises while Billy pitifully attempts to follow along, and then Ernie comes over and rolls a cart around that Billy somehow lands on and then zooms around the place screaming before he crashes. Trini is the only one that cares and helps him up, and this brings up an interesting point that we'll see in the early stages of Season 1. Originally, the Rangers were definitely intended to be their own comic relief before the addition of Bulk and Skull, and some of that stuff definitely still trickles in during outlandish moments like this. Reed is watching this dumbass show too via her telescope, and she decides that she'll defeat the Rangers with music then. I mean, okay, that's kind of like a weird leap to make there, Rita, but okay. So Kim is back to teaching, and some girl just straight up twirls into the other, and the one that gets hit is like offended by this. Kim sees the fender bender and tells everyone to take a break while she walks over to the girl who messed up. Turns out her name is Melissa, and she's deaf. Why Kim is signing while speaking normally then is like beyond me, but either way she apologizes for not signing the moves to Melissa like she was supposed to. Wait, hold up. Kimberly is a high school student and Power Ranger who teaches at the gym as a dance instructor who also does gymnastics competitively who had time to learn American Sign Language? Like damn, no wonder I stretch myself so thin these days. This moment deflates pretty quickly by Kim saying that even hearing people make mistakes, and she like points at Billy, who's really terrible at dancing. I mean, to be fair, Kim, you suck at remembering to sign the move, so like, how is any of this Melissa's fault? I just don't know why Melissa went out on a limb and started tornadoing on the dance floor, but like, whatever. Rita requests Finster to make her a musical monster, and wow, I'm pretty sure Finster is just like messing with her this time around. Just wait. Speaking of messes, Bulk and Skull walk into the juice bar and somehow it ends up with Bulk and Zack doing a dance off. No joke. To no one's shock, Zack beats him, but really, like, what was there to win except for taking up more time in this episode? Finster explains his new monster to her, the Gnarly Gnome. The plan? The Gnarly Gnome will use his hypnotizing accordion to kidnap a bunch of teenage girls so that the rangers will try to save them and get hypnotized. Yeah, that's the plan this week. It's just straight up a hostage situation because Finster has no goddamn chill. Here's a question though. How are people going to know that the girls are missing? Are you banking on the idea that their parents are expecting them home right away? So Gnarly Gnome plays his accordion outside the juice bar and gets a group of girls and Melissa, but since Melissa can't hear, she's not affected by the noise. She follows them to where he takes them, which is definitely a random ass cave in the middle of the desert. She tries to help, but a rope comes down in front of her, stopping her from doing anything somehow. Like it's not even a magic rope, it's just a rope fence. Melissa runs back to the youth center and she tries to tell Jason and Ernie what happened, but Jason and Ernie are pretty much like two steps away from just going like, what? I can't hear you because, you know, death. So she writes it all out for them. Jason says he'll help because, you know, she can hear, and then they leave. Meanwhile, back at the cave, Gnarly Gnome is playing his accordion while this episode shits itself. The girls and some putties are dancing, Babu and Squat show up in aprons to cook something, there's worms and jelly balls, and then the Gnarly Gnome takes a nap. I mean, I wish I were actually skipping over things to make this sound nonsensical. Then he turns invisible because he took off his shoes, but it's okay because he gets his shoes back on and now he's visible again. Anyways, the rangers show up with their deaf friend and they uh, tell her to hide and they morph pretty much right in front of her. Like, guys, she's deaf, not blind. I guess we just have to hope that she never thinks to write out what happened to anyone. Gnarly Gnome fights the rangers with a rake because, okay, and the footage gets messed up so Kimberly becomes gray for a little bit there. They put their weapons together to form the power blaster and hit Gnarly Gnome, who turns into a pile of rocks. Seriously, what the fuck is happening? Rita makes the rocks grow into a giant Gnarly Gnome and the rangers call out the Megazord. In a seizure-rific battle, Gnarly Gnome flashes between himself and a boulder and also a building over and over again, and of course, the rangers get the upper hand and win. The rangers show up out of suit in the cave and rescue the group of kidnapped girls who proclaim that the Power Rangers were amazing and so great and wait, how the hell would they know? Whatever, everyone goes back to the juice bar and we find out the moral of the day. Deaf people are people too. Thanks Power Rangers. Oh, and Billy dances at the end. This episode was pretty rough, 
but I kind of love how rough it is. It's like the writers got up in the middle of the episode and decided to do musical chairs around the computer without reading anything for prior contacts. It's just psychotic. And while most of it can be blamed on the Japanese footage being strange, they really, really could have made some sort of effort to make a coherent story. I will say that this episode is also a weird focus one because it seems like it's going to be Kimberly centric before it like ends up just being about some random girl that Kim is friends with. Hell, Melissa should have been a Power Ranger. She's the only one who knew that the girls got kidnapped. And furthermore, if she could hear, would Gnarly Gnome have just been sitting around with a bunch of teenage girls waiting for the Power Rangers to like maybe show up? Like what, what, what was the plan? Next time is an episode that a lot of people hold near and dear to their hearts, Food Fight. But until then, may the power protect you.